Who are you? Why should I even care? Oh, you're just another one of those businesses. I've never even heard of you before. You are not what I'm looking for. What makes you so different? I don't like you or what you stand for. Man, I am so lost. What I just said are the exact thoughts that your target audience is having when they visit your website, when they see your brand, when they see your logo, when they see the name of your business, when they first interact with you. They understand and they have all these questions, these objections, these things, this friction in between you and them on why should they even care basically? Who are you, right? So the question is how do you connect with them? What is the bridge? How do you instantly build that connection with them as soon as they meet or see your business the first time? The first thing I want you to do is I want you to comment below and let me know what are some questions that you think your target audience is thinking about related to your business. What are the objections that they have in their mind and what are they related to? You can just comment below right now. The second thing is I want you to watch until the end because at the end of this video, I'll be sharing with you the frameworks, the templates, a step-by-step -step walkthrough of how you can build that instant connection with your target audience, how to successfully implement this branding and positioning into your business. But that's at the end of this video. Your target audience doesn't care about you or your business. They only care about what matters to them. I had to learn this the hard way when I started out in business. When I focused on just trying to build the branding and the positioning, not even my personal brand, but of an actual business, the mobile app business or the construction business that I was involved in, I had to figure out what was the best way to position my position those businesses with my partners. And at the same time, all I did was we looked at competitors, we modeled after them, we looked at design, the website, the copy, the, the frameworks, all this stuff, the branding, the, the visuals, all the stuff that we've modeled after our competitors. And guess what? We utterly failed to communicate what we even stood for because we look just like everybody else. And that's one of the things that you must overcome with your target audience. When they see you, what makes you so different is one of the key questions that they have. And when I was able to understand the process that I'm about to share with you, I was able to turn around the business. Our business skyrocketed. We took off. We started generating five, six, seven, eight figures a year and being able to do this for clients as well and build a successful business because we understood the foundation of the branding and the positioning that we have to set in place that I'm about to share with you. Now, the first part of this important process to be able to understand and leverage and increase your traffic, but also set up your branding and positioning so that when your target audience visits your website, they resonate with you, they don't have all these questions in their mind, they don't bounce off your website because they don't resonate with your values, and you answer all the questions in the first few minutes. So one of the core things that we wanna do is we wanna use the ideal audience persona that you learn in module one in this module two of traffic to be able to leverage this and use it in your business. As part of this process, I want you to see things through how I look at it through my eyes, the valuable insights that we're able to pull to be able to understand the branding and positioning. And we can apply this in the real world with real businesses. The first company that I'm gonna walk you through the branding and positioning and increasing your traffic is The Honest Company with Jessica Alba. Let's just look at the first impression that you have of The Honest Company. Right when we're looking at this page, what are the things that stand out to you? To me, I see that they're using the green color, they're using babies at the front, so that says something, right? And also the name of the company is Honest Company. There's a reason why they chose that name. And then as we scroll down, we can see their products. We can see that they have baby-related products, beauty products, home products. And then we look at their menu, they have bundles, best deals, they have free trials, they have diapering, feeding, personal care, cleaning, vitamins and more, gifts and beauty. And we scroll down more, we can see that they have diapers and wipes, they have essentials, home essentials, they have our special discounts. Then we have uh, certain testimonials that they have from certain members on their specific products. Then we got their best sellers, and then we go into why honest is important for them. So we can see that they value safety for uh, the babies. They say they love their babies, that's why they err on the side of caution, and they focus on doing the best to avoid chemicals of concern. The next thing is innovative formulas. So you can see that they have proprietary things that they use to be able to create safe products for babies. Next thing is thoughtful design. They're always focusing on renewable resources, things that are sustainable and derived, plant-derived ingredients. And then you scroll down, you see there's a background image of a baby looking at a cupcake or a tart, and there's an honest company there. More of the goods than they have honestly made without this. They have satisfaction guarantee. They have driving change, community impact. They talk about how they give back. They've donated over 10.8 million diapers, 
over 1.5 million family essentials, over 14.2K volunteer hours. Then they have to split up by their baby section, beauty and home section. Then they have their footer menu. Just looking at this specific thing, you can see they have a cute image of multiple babies wearing sports, uh, their partnership with MLB and whatnot. Just looking at this, the question I want you to find when we look at the ideal audience, who do you think they're selling to? Who is their target audience and what are they answering right away as soon as someone lands on their website? They, you can see right there, their front facing uh, product. The insights that you should get is their e-commerce business. They're focusing on selling uh, baby products, uh, things that are safe, that are sustainable. And then they share with you the essentials, the types of categories that they have. And then you can see right away, they start answering their objections, right? They use testimonials. The questions I start out with this video was, you know, who are you? Why should I care? Oh, you're just another one of those businesses. But then we go into this section, you can see they focus on why is it important for you to buy here and so let's say at Walmart or any other superstore or whatever market that you can go to. You can see they have more of the goods. They have things that really differentiate them from their competitors, what they stand for, why it's important, how they give back. They have that social story, that social component that they built into their brand. So if we look at the ideal client persona, we fill this in just roughly, I'm just gonna give you what I see first impression wise. We look at the internal drivers, emotional triggers. What do they want people when they look at the site to see? The number one, a few words that come into your mind, in my mind, you can even see on the screen on one of the banners is safety. They want the people when they see this to feel safe. They want people to feel security. At the same time, they want to feel like there's nature, right? Things that are caring. They want things that they actually care. Care is a key word. Safety, care, loving, sustainable, healthy, non-toxic. They want them to feel really, really good and confident in their product. The next thing is the goals. So they want to make sure that they're sustainable, that they're making impact in their community. They're making change in the environment, in their community. That's their goals that they have. The values is the exact same thing. And they're leading with this on their homepage. So you can see just how important and how well Honest Company understands on putting the values and connecting that with the target audience. Now, obviously, Honest Company is a $100 million plus company. They're valued at hundreds of millions and probably billions of dollars, just to give you that example. And it's not by mistake. They carefully crafted this based on the ideal client persona. The next thing is the current attention, right? They understand uh, who the target audience is. is most likely going to be parents. Focus on, if you look at the colors, targeted at moms or peop, um, uh, women that are about to become moms and using the colors here to elicit the nature kind of like a turquoise kind of greenish color to focus on that, which is nurturing. Nurturing is one of the key words. So we would say that the age is between 25 to 45, maybe even 50. Gender is female, the marital status is married, age of children, between obviously newborns all the way up to seven, six, or maybe eight years old. Location could be anywhere. The quote is they care about people, occupation, they can work at uh, any kind of occupation, job title, annual income. Level of education can be anything. Now, one of the things that you look at is almost like a, if you look at it, it's similar to Whole Foods, so their pricing in the products could be a little bit higher. So they're serving more of a mid market to more of a premium market for people that actually want to spend more for cleaner, better products, similar to how Whole Foods value proposition is. If you look at the books, the magazines, conference gurus, what are the problems that they're solving, right? One of the key things you can tell right away is that instead of you know buying the products that aren't safe or healthy for their babies, you can buy it for clean and healthy products for things that actually matter. They care about it, right? So they're solving that pain point of unsafe chemical driven products with sustainable healthy products. The buying process, right? Current options, they can buy unhealthy ones. They can buy all these different things, objections to the sale. Things could be again, money, pricing, timing, uh, belief in the product, if this really works, belief in themselves, if this is something that works for their baby or for them, of course they care, but this is the right product. Role in the purchasing process. Now, what's interesting is I know as a statistic is that most of the household decisions are made by parents and made by moms specifically of taking care of the children. So that's one of the key things. They're the key decision makers, which is why the Honest Company has positioned it this way. So this is just some key insights based on the ideal client persona when we break down the Honest Company. Now, the next business that we're going to look at is in the B2B space. It's called SAP. Now, SAP is one of the largest business-to-business -business enterprise software and technology businesses in the world. And this is how they use their branding and positioning. Solving problems is what business does best. The world's biggest problems need best-run businesses. And then they have someone speaking about a specific video. And they talk about watch this inspiring video. Then they go down, when you scroll down, they have the feature solutions based on the products and the softwares that they have. And they have different names for it. 
Then they go down. What's interesting about this, you can see it from a B2B perspective, is they have a social mission. They have saving elephants and rhinos. Elephant and rhino poaching is rampant in South Africa. See how a forward-looking nonprofit tackled this problem from all sides, using SAP, of course. So you can see the net, that's one of the sections. The next part is banking power to the people. Millions of people in rural Latin America have no bank accounts or safe ways to manage money. A caring bank is changing that. The next thing is you can see they're focusing on turning air into opportunities. And they have the SAP community, the way that, again, keyword, community, SAP community. And they have certain words and testimonials of people that are using the SAP to be successful companies. And you can see on their menu, they have different products. They have the industries that they serve. They have support, training, community, developer specific partners about their business. They have personal profiles. So it's a very simple and clear page. Now, what's interesting about this when you're looking at it, if we look at the different colors they're using, it's very, it's black, right? It's very professional looking. It's very uh, social driven as well, because they understand that what's the point of talking about enterprise software solutions when you want to build that emotion, that social impact. So when we look at the actual ideal client persona, what are the emotional triggers that they're trying to elicit to the people that land on their website, right? And they're trying to answer the questions, what is the key things? And I'm pretty sure that they keep, kept this video at the very top because this video answers those specific questions. You know, who are you? Why should we care? What makes you different? Oh, you're just like every other enterprise software business. That's the questions that Targons has when they land on SAP. And they address it through this video and they address it through these social missions that they have and, and they're empowering big problems in South Africa, in Latin America, they're using uh, global problems using the technology. So the mission, the message they're trying to get across, think of this. If they're able to solve these big problems, then they're able to solve even smaller business problems as well. Businesses that are doing, whether that's Fortune 500, Fortune 100, to businesses small, medium, or large, if these people can solve countries' problems, then they can definitely solve businesses' problems. That's the message they're trying to get across, along with the social element here. So that's the emotional triggers. They want to show that they're preeminent, so that means they're the leading company. They want to show that they're, they're the leader, they're the top in the space. That's their goals, the values that they have. You can see their social mission. They're able to solve the biggest problems in our society, in the world, using SAP. The values, so they're big, they're, they're focusing on the social impact. The next thing that we look at current attention, they look at the B2B space. If we look at the persona name, if we define a person, the age, the gender, marital status, is usually for focused on males that are using a specific uh, type of product. You can see in this video too, they're using a male to speak to their target audience. And SAP, people that make decisions are executives, CEOs, CMOs, CTOs, and all these people that are more executive level, C-level management people focusing on this. And the next thing is the problems that they solve is focused on technology problems, growth problems, any related to anything related to enterprise software issues that they solve. Pain points and the same thing, buying processes, they're re focusing on executives and C-level people, which are one of the ones that are core in the buying process for any organization. And this is what they focus on. And this is just SAP for a B2B space when we break it down. Now, the third core business that we're gonna walk through is Natim. Now, Natim is a cashmere type business that's online and they focus on creating cashmere that's high end and luxury, but also with a purposeful and meaningful impact in the world and sustainably producing it as well. And that person even supported this business right when they start out at the very beginning. Now, the third final company that we're gonna break down is Natim Cashmere. Now, Natim focuses on creating sustainable cashmere for the target audience, both women and men. Now, one thing that we can see on the website, remember the questions that people have in their mind, their objections, the friction, right? They leave with the video. Really, it's real sustainability, real people, real materials. I highly recommend that you take the time to watch the video because in their video, they do a stellar job, an amazing way to market their brand, market their mission, and the way that they're creating their cashmere, and they keep it very entertaining. And so when you watch that video, when you buy into their mission, Buying the cashmere is second to none. There's no problem in selling a product when you're able to get people to buy into that specific emotion and story, and they know that, so they lead with it at the very top. The next thing they have is just talk about their specific collections that they have, why it's important. And then you can see the next section they talk about is the Natum difference. So they focus on three core things. 100% clean energy, clean energy power, production facility, livable wages, programs for healthier goats, and more sustainable grazing practices. They represent that sustainability. The next thing is the fair to nomadic herders. So they pay 50% more than traditional traders and they cut away the middlemen. So that's one of the key things on how they're able to offer their prices for their high quality cashmere. They also focus on telling that their cashmere is the most durable 
And then they can see it says 365 days of Natum. So they want you to buy all their clothing, their cashmere, everything. I personally even have a Natum cashmere. It's very great, highly recommend the product. I don't wanna put this as a push in, but I'm the person of the founders. But the next thing is the cashmere you can see is the shopping, the women's, the men's, the different types of products that they have. Their hashtag live Natum. They have the testimonials again. Written testimonials are good. I recommend they have video testimonials. But the next thing is they have cotton cashmere. They have different pro styles of the products and they have an email opt-in. Then they have press talking about the different things, certain uh, verbiage on quotes on what they have to say about it from Bloomberg, Forbes, Entrepreneur to build that social proof. Now breaking down this website, when we look at it from the ideal client persona, what are the emotional triggers that they're trying to elicit in the target audience? Right away, you can see at the top, they say start with real sustainability, real people, real materials. They demonstrate that through the video. So they care about cutting away to middlemen and they want to elicit something that they care. Caring is one of the keywords again. They want to show that they, they have a difference, right? They're making a difference in the social proof. They want people to feel great about buying their product because they have the social mission. Their goals is the same thing. Now their values, you can see is the net of difference. When you actually go on their story page, you can even see the specific parts that they have. They talk about they're disrupting a thousand year old industry. That's what makes them different. They show their things are ethically sourced. They talk about the, the values that they're associated with. They talk about what's the difference as well in, in more detail. They also talk about their mission, their story, and they've done this incredibly well in how they laid it out on the about page that you can see right here from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then you can see one of their slogans is they go ethical luxury at your fingertips. So ethics and morals is one of their core values that they resonate with and they want their target audience to resonate with as well. And next thing for the age, we can see that based on the images right away on their website, right? You can see it's very young, a thriving kind of hipster type of audience, you know, modern uh, millennials between ages of 18 all the way to 35. You can see most of the audiences in, based on their images are very young and so they're leading with this. So that's their target answer. They're going through and they're visually showing it through the, the photos of these people. The problems that they're solving again is because cashmere is normally very expensive and they're using it in, in inorganic and unsustainable ways to get that and they solve that problem with Natum. The next thing is the buying process. So in the buying process you can see is people that are buying these products are the images, the millennials that they're showing in the screen. So that's an example of how to break down Natum with the ideal client persona. When you dive deeper into it using the process, you're able to understand even more parts of how Natum is able to build their brand in the position to increase their traffic. Now, one of the core factors, now that you, we've broken down Honest Company, we've broken down Natum, we've broken down SAP from B2C to B2B industries, and you can see how it ties to the ideal client persona right away just by going on their website and what they're trying to articulate and communicate and address the objections in the target audience's mind when they land and interact with the brand. I want you to share with you one core principle that's one of the most powerful things that you can do and they're using right away. What I call is the value resonance. Now, value resonance is one of the things that businesses use to be able to tie their values with their target audience. They stack it up. What are the top four to five values that you must have for your business that is resonating with your target audience? When we looked at Honest Company, the values that they had was they had safety. That's one of the values. Sustainability, health, caring. Those are the values that they have for their business and they articulate it through the visuals, the copy, the everything they do in their marketing, how they're structuring their website, the sections, the copy, their messaging, everything is built on these values and they're resonating with the target audience. Same thing with SAP, right? Preeminent, solid, stable, social impact. They're solving big problems. Those are the values that they have. Those are the goals that they have as well and they're articulating that with their target audience, and their target audience, when they have those same values, they have value resonance. That's what you wanna achieve with your business. Business, your target audience, value resonance. So one of the things that you do this is through the website that I walked you through, but at the same time, two core things of building a brand and positioning, increasing your traffic, and addressing the objections that your target audience has in their mind is being able to have those values right away and also in every single interaction between your business and your target audience, you wanna make sure you're living these core values, these value resonance that you wanna have with them and the messaging that you put on social media, the emails that you send, the advertising that you create, the videos that you make, 
how you say things in the videos, how you produce the content, what words are you using, what are the colors that you're using as well. And also it's really done by the interactions that you have every single day, every single week, and through everything that you put out for your business online. Now I wanna really show you again the real world principle application of this, and I'm gonna walk you through some examples, some principles that you can apply to your business, the storytelling, the core value positioning, the benefits, results, and transformation that you wanna to offer to your target audience and plus some real world companies in the Fortune 500 that are using this. And now I'm just gonna go over it briefly and I'm gonna walk you through this in an expanded post more on bensonsum.com on the Digital Marketing University part. Now you can see in front of you, this is a slide that I presented to thousands of entrepreneurs online through a live webinar, but I wanna share this because it's one of the core principles that you wanna understand about core value positioning. So this is gonna all tie to increasing your traffic when you're able to answer these questions. When you core value positioning, this goes into, let's break it down with some actual real world companies. We look at Whole Foods, theirs is with great courage, integrity, and love. We embrace our responsibility to co-create a world where each of us, our community, and our planet can flourish, all the while celebrating the sheer love and joy of food. Next thing with Amazon. Amazon's vision is to be the Earth's most client-centric company to build a place where people can come to find, discover anything they want to buy online. Then we have Louis Vuitton, a high-end passion brand, to represent the most defined qualities of Western art de vivre, the art of living around the world to be synonymous with both elegance and creativity to blend tradition and innovation and kindle dream and fantasy. And we finally have SAP to help the world run better and improve people's lives. Our mission is to help every client become a best run business. We do this by delivering technology innovations that address challenges of today and tomorrow without disrupting our clients' business operations. So we break this down, essentially we want to look at the mission. What is the mission that you have in your business? What is the community that you're speaking to? What is the audience problem that you're solving? Who is the audience, the solution that you have for your audience, and the emotional trigger. That's the core value position that you want to create for your business. The next thing is a storytelling. A storytelling is going to be focusing on six core ways to tell your story. Now, this is the actual principle framework that you're going to get at the end, but I'm going to walk you through briefly what it is. The first thing is the brand and company storytelling. You want to talk about your brand. What is your company history? How did you get founded? What is the mission and the purpose of your business? The next thing is the social impact storytelling. So you can see on the examples I gave before, honest, NADM, SAP, they all use different types of storytelling. Social impact storytelling. What is the good that your product or service does? How are you impacting the world in a better and making it a better place? The next thing is the client storytelling, right? How are you telling the testimonials and people that are using your product or service successfully? The next thing is process storytelling. So this is going to share your process. You can talk about how you create the products or how you derive your services. The next thing is community collective storytelling. This is talking about the environment, the ecosystem. Essentially, what does your community represent? The next thing we go into is emotional identity storytelling. This is something that I want to break down with Dove, Red Bull, and Nike. And it's going to give you some clear illustrations of how this works. So if we look at Dove, one of the ways that they've been mastery, masterfully been able to do, and I recommend you go on their website, is they've been able to, to sell a commodity using the branding position that they've been able to create and increase their traffic online by having a very strong branding and positioning leveraging real beauty for women, empowering women with self-confidence and love. Now the question I asked here you can see is, are they in the soap business? They're not, they're in the female self-development and soap products is just a way to monetize and that's a key distinction. If you truly realize how powerful this is, then you're ahead. So you're gonna ask us this at the end, but Dove has have done it massively to be able to position this and then sell a product by focusing more on the storytelling and the emotion of branding aside from the product. Next thing is Red Bull. Red Bull has been able to focus on creating a very strong branding position in the marketplace, focused on energy, extreme sports, and then again, I ask you the question, are they in the energy drink business? No, they're in the extreme lifestyle and the sports media business and energy drinks is one of the ways, one of the popular ways that they monetize and be able to create that thing. So I flip it around and you can see how powerful it is. Now, this is not just limited to Dove and Red Bull, but it's tied to, you can see Lego, you can see Apple, you can see Louis Vuitton, they all do the exact same thing. They focus on creating that emotional identity and that branding and positioning to increase their traffic and then they monetize with the products that they have. So storytelling, again, you want to develop a content that has a human element. You want to be make sure it's sincere. You want to make sure it's something that they're generally interested in reading and watching. It connects with your target audience. The stories have heroes, heroes and characters. And you want to keep it simple and describe it in one line. So I'm going to share with you the process again in the expanded post. The last and final thing you want to focus on is benefits, results, and transformation. That is what your target audience wants. You want to keep in mind these five core points that you see on the screen. Focusing on benefits, results, and transformation is what your target audience wants to have when they buy your product or service or when they engage with your business. 
This is how you deal with the questions that they have in their mind when they see your business. The, the, the why are you important, why should I care, I don't like your values, I don't trust you, I don't know you, I don't like you. They will not have any of these doubts when you do this extremely well. Now that you know how to create that branding and positioning and leverage it to increase your traffic so you can address the objections that your target audience has in their mind, this is what they're really saying if you think about it. Your target audience, they don't know anything about you, they don't like you, they don't trust you. And you want to provide them certainty, clarity, and direction with your business and your brand. That's one of the most important things. That's why they have questions like, why should I care? What's important about your business to me? How long is this gonna take? Will I really get results with your product or service? What problem are you really solving for me? There's a list of questions that you must answer that I'm gonna give you on the expanded post. But this is just a brief verbiage on what are those questions and what you need to answer throughout your website and the experience that you're providing for your target audience. Now that you know the core process to be able to implement effective branding and positioning in your business and leveraging it for more traffic, one of the core factors that you want to have, all these things I share with you, is going to be built on the actual expanded post on bensonson.com on the Digital Marketing University. You can go there, you can see the frameworks, the templates, all the questions that your target audience has, and how to actually successfully implement this for your business online. Now, three things I want you to do is I want you to comment below, I want you to let me know what is one insight that you gained from this video, what is one value that you have for your business, or any questions that you have that you, after you've watched this video. You comment below, I personally respond to your questions. The second thing I want you to do is I want you to like this video, let me know that you like this content, it means you're getting value from it, and I'll continue to produce more of these kinds of videos so you can use it to be able to grow your business online. The final thing I want you to do, you can see right there, I want you to subscribe to the YouTube channel, and join one of the fastest growing YouTube communities for entrepreneurs and digital marketers to grow their business online. Right there, you can see me on the circle right there. I want you to hit that subscribe button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the videos that we're releasing because there are gonna be even more content, even better things that you're gonna get value from ongoing. So thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in one of the next ones.